Example scene four. The purpose of this exercise was for me to find out whether I could actually uh, import 3D animation from uh, Mixamo specifically, is what I used, and rotoscope over the top of it to see if that actually works within 3D space. So not tracing over the top of, uh, say, a flat image, actually um, tracing over to rotoscope on a grease pencil that's attached to a 3D object. One of my motivations for doing this is sometimes in my job, um, a project might have gone into layout or previs or rough and rough animation, and then they find that they need a bit more information that's easier to come from 2D. And sometimes you have to kind of go over the top of some rough animation. So I thought, well, it might be really interesting if we could actually do that live in the, in the space. And so the animators then have the um, the drawn version of the adjustment running alongside uh, their animation. So you can do this with any existing 3D animation or any new animation you've created. I used Mixamo because I wanted to grab something quickly. It's a great resource for uh, lots of standardized animations that you'll see a lot of. You can choose different characters as you've seen here, different skins. When you're happy, just go to download and then uh, make sure it's got the animation and, and the, uh, the skin, download it and import it into Blender. File, import, FBX, locate your file, import the file, So there it is in the viewport. Zoom in so you can see a little better. As you can see on the timeline at the bottom there, there are a bunch of keyframes. You scrub through, you can see the animation is working. That means you're imported in. You need to lay this out in the environment how you want it. I'm not going to do that here. You can see how I've laid it out in the scene. And if you want really detailed tutorials about laying 3D out animation out, uh, there are other tutorials for that. So here's a bunch of animations that I've imported into the various shots, stitch them together. Uh, to lay out the animation I wanted. So now we're in here, let's pause it about here and let's start adding in our grease pencil so that we can start rotoscoping. Okay. So as before, uh, I select the object and then create, uh, put the cursor on the object and then create the new grease pencil layer. You can see the canvas is already activated here. So I'll go straight into draw mode and get busy. Always remember to parent the grease pencil object to the object you're tracing off. So once I've made a few strokes here now, and that's enough to identify where my grease pencil layer is, I popped out of the camera. What I would advise doing when this rotoscoping kind of thing is to go back into object mode now for your grease pencil and just push it, pop it slightly off on the axis towards wherever your camera direction is. It's just kind of sitting just over the object. Um, that's just going to make it a bit easier. You're always going to have that that nice clarity between the objects. Sometimes it can kind of get a bit clippy um, because you've got moving parts, arms swinging around and everything. So I'm looking for some optimal viewport settings at the moment. So I've jumped into the 2D animation mode, 2D animation tab at the top there. I've just switched off a few settings. Um, switching, playing with the kind of the fade of the, the objects. It's a little tricky when you've got 3D because by default, sometimes this X-ray thing is on. So if you switch that off in uh, in the drop-down tab, there got matte caps, nice for, for going over 2D, uh, 3D. Uh, switch the X-ray off because it gets really busy. So now we've got a nice clear viewport and start uh, rotoscoping over this. So you just get busy now. You just start rotoscoping. It's fairly simple. You've got the reference right in front of you. Just draw over it. Uh, you see this kind of black, just dark light flicker in the happens constantly. This is, seems to be a new feature in Blender. Whenever you make a stroke, it makes it, everything goes darker or lighter, depending on whether you're making a stroke or not. I don't know how to switch that off. So if anyone knows how to switch it off, please let me know because it gets on my nerves a bit. So, you know, your your character might not look like exactly like the character you brought in. Probably won't. So maybe we have a cape. So draw any cape, draw your extra bits, make, make, it, looks like it, make it look like your character. Uh, move along to your next keyframe, start tracing that out. There's the cape again. Uh, start tracing in the character, add in whatever details are relevant, and then just keep going. Uh, keep rotoscoping to your heart's desire. So we're done with this sample, and you can hide then the 3D, the 3D animation object and you're just left with the 2D. So once more, then you can see the, um, the results of that, uh, the rotoscoping running alongside the original animation. 
Uh, we're using, the, again, the camera sort of uh, cuts like we did in the previous example. Uh, I want to take the note, uh, take a moment here to say that the scaffold that I've built here is actually, uh, I didn't build the objects, I laid it out from a kit that was from um, Blender Swap. I will link the, uh, the artist and the kit in the description. Everything else in these videos is 100% made by me. So that's the end of this big fat tutorial. Um, I hope it's covered enough of the things that you're interested in. Hopefully you'll learn a lot. If you wanna um, follow me or keep in contact with me, just uh, follow me on social media. I have an Instagram account, which is Spitfire Storyboards. I have a website, which is www.spitfire storyboards. I have a LinkedIn account and I have a Vimeo account as well. And this YouTube channel that you'll probably be watching this on. So uh, yeah, feel free to follow, like, subscribe and comment in the sections and I will uh, do my best on YouTube and Instagram to respond to any queries and I uh, hope to do another one in the future. Bye.